I've got the joy deep down in my heart. I'm waking up with your love from the start. I'm chasing the rainbow through the rain. Many of us have seen the award-winning movie, Don't Say My Name. Inspired by a true story, this movie tells the story of human trafficking survivor, Adriana. On today's show, we have the award-winning actress who played this very difficult role. I'm so delighted to have her. Well, welcome back to Coffee, everyone. Conversations of Friends of Faith to Encourage and Equip. I'm Kim Crable, so delighted to be your host. Today's guest is not only an award-winning actress, but she is also transitioning to explore her talents as a singer-songwriter and all the success she's having. She's an actress. She's a songwriter. She does so many things, but I am so proud to be able to also call her my friend. And I'm so excited to introduce to you, Brooklyn Whitmer. Brooklyn, come on in. Hi. Hello. Hi. Thanks for having me. I'm so delighted to have you. The only thing that would be better is if you were sitting right here beside me. <laughs> oh, that would be so fun. <laughs> One day we will. In the meantime, I know I'm doing this outside of Atlanta. Where are you today? Well, I'm in Indiana, home, a hometown girl and small town girl, should I say. Um, so, yeah, Midwest gal. Yeah, absolutely. Don't you love technology and how we can make it work for us? Yes, it's incredible. Like the people that you meet even online and then getting to see them like you, like as it's just been so cool connecting with you through social media. Yes, it has. And I've learned to love you so much because we see you on film. We hear you on the radio, but I love your heart, Brooklyn. Let's start with, let's just start there. Tell me about your faith. Yeah. Um, for me, I feel like God's been taking me on an amazing journey of just like personal growth um, in my career and everything. And I grew up in a Christian household, uh, but it's really cool because I think that the Lord took me on a personal journey just to trust him in my own life. And I so, had so many great role models in my life of the Christian faith, but it, it was just neat to see God take me from a place of insecurity and just feeling like I'm not good enough to a place of he's called me to this career of entertainment. And he's put me in places that a, year, a couple years ago, I would have been scared to even try. So yeah. I just love how he gently leads us into places that he calls us to. And he shows us that we have these gifts and we can use them for his glory. Oh, that's so beautiful. And Brooklyn, I'll tell you, many times I get phone calls from moms um, when their kids go off to college or they take their first job, they move out of the home. And the first thing is to go, they say is, oh my gosh, they've forgotten everything we taught them. They're questioning their faith. They're, they're, they're walking away from their faith. They're just, and I'll go, that's good. And they go, what? That's good. And that's basically what you just said. You have to learn to experience it for yourself, right, Brooklyn? It, there comes a point where you raised in a Christian family or not, whatever, but you get to a point as a young adult or wherever you are in life where you have to realize that faith comes by believing yourself, not through your parents or not through your grandparents, but you really have to experience it uh, for yourself, right? Oh, I totally agree. Yeah. Because you can you can hear it and you can know it, but yes, actually yes. knowing it in your heart and like knowing the peace of God and knowing his grace for you is like something completely different. And it's a blessing to live in a household. I know like I am blessed to have parents and family that love the Lord, but it, you know, it's just special whenever he just takes you to places that you never yes. imagined for yourself. Absolutely. And that's really the heart of every parent that their child um, has that deep personal relationship with Christ. Well, Fran, let's get right into this. Thank you for sharing so much of your personal self with you, with us. Um, the movie Don't Say My Name. Let's talk about that. How did you walk into that role? Yeah, that was an incredible God story for sure. Um, I actually... <laughs> And I wouldn't advise this, but I found the casting call through Facebook. 
but I had a mutual friend that was casting this movie and her name was Laura May. And I connected with her because I was in this talent conference when I was 18. And that's how I got my start in acting. I always sang my whole life, but at 18, that's where I got that kick off of like, okay, I can do acting too and modeling. And so it was just a cool journey. And through that, like I said, I met with Laura May and then I found this casting call through her and I submitted and I just reached out and sent a tape. And then it was interesting because I literally sent in the tape. It was like the fall of 2018. And then I remember I was like, okay, I'm going to send it in and then I'm going to forget it. Because like a lot of times they tell you as actors, you do it and you move on because you just don't know if you're going to get the project. And that's, you know, that's part of it. And so I did that. And then literally a couple months later, I get this call from Marty Jean-Louise, who is the producer of the film and the founder of ICFF. And I didn't know this at the time. I was like new to all this. And he was like, had sent me a voicemail and I listened to the voicemail and he's like, hi, this is Marty from Don't Say My Name. I'm like, don't say my name. Okay. I could not remember. And I was like, oh no. And so I like looked in my emails and I was like, oh my goodness, this is one of the most intense roles I auditioned for. Cause I'm a very happy go lucky person. So for me to like dive into something like that was like a lot. So I was like, oh my goodness, I can't believe like, of course. And so yeah, it was just a whirlwind experience. I met them. I met the producer and the writer and director down in Florida at the International Christian Film Festival, ICFF. And they knew right away when I walked in the doors that I was the one to play the role. And I didn't know that, of course, but in faith I went. And yeah, it was just a cool journey. Just really neat. Well, it's such an intense movie. It's uh, one that, you know, it's a subject that people really don't like to talk about. Exactly. But we must. Um, I work with a, a group um, who they actually they literally do stings on uh, child trafficking he is a former navy seal and it's incredible and horrible and heart-wrenching all the things that um you see and you learn about it but then there's so much hope because of the people that are out there on the front lines you know really trying to make a difference you, you said you said that this was a role unlike anything that you had prepared for its intensity. May I ask you, what was it like? How did you, um, because this character is so different than you as a person, how did you prepare to go into that? Take us behind the scenes. What would you think uh, before the lights would turn on to, to, to fit this character that you were playing that was so important for us to see? Yeah, that's, that's really a great question. Um, for me, while I was actually prepping for the role, um, I had to really go to deep places in my own life, um, places that I was scared of because this girl was hurt. Um, she was a human trafficking survivor. She was sold by her own mother. And yes. it was just something like that. It's like with family, you know, it's not just like something outside of that. And so I had to go to those deep places personally to find that hurt. And it scared me. It really did. Um, but I connected with it, with the pain of just or like the vulnerability really of just like finding that place of like okay like I don't know where to go with all these feelings like I don't know where to turn but through that process of like getting into that that hurt and that pain you could see that like there is beauty on the other side if you could just hold on to, in, in the darkness just hold on there's still light coming and I think that that was something that was so encouraging for me in my personal life and things that I was dealing with that I didn't know I was dealing with. And then also with Adriana, because I, I know like after we had screened the movies in a couple places in the United States and the Dominican Republic and all that, we've had survivors come up and they would come to me and share their stories. And I really connected with them because they just truly, I could tell they trusted me. And I saw that they connected with the Adriana story. And I was like, praise the Lord, because like I said, I wasn't trafficked before, right. but we all connect in deeper levels of pain. And I knew that God had unlocked that for me to share on screen um, in the most authentic way. And yes. I'm so grateful for that because I do think that the story is changing lives. And I think that it's also bringing awareness to what's going on around us, which is human trafficking. Yeah, absolutely. Did you ever, um, Brooklyn, did you ever, you said that you had to go into places you weren't even aware that you had. Did you ever feel so vulnerable? I mean, in the movie, you you looked 
gosh, it was amazing. And that's why you are an award-winning actress because of, and the awards that you won from this role are too numerous to talk about. But as just as a person, as a human being, um, when you got into those roles, did you ever feel that hopelessness? Did you, I mean, were, did you allow yourself to kind of fall into that? Uh, and how did, then how do you bring yourself back out of that? Yeah, I, I did. I, I really felt that, like that feeling of just nowhere to turn, kind of a lost soul. Yeah. <laughs> But I, I truly had such peace in, in going that in that place because I had so many people praying for me. My mom had people praying for me at home. She had a calendar for people every day, um, wow. our community praying for me. And then also on set, we would pray over our scenes. And I needed that personally because, you know, it, it, wherever your emotions can go, it, you don't really know sometimes where it can lead to and where you can hold what you can hold on to. But. I felt so carried. I actually could laugh on on set, like outside of the scenes that we had to do, like the really heavy scenes. I could actually like be okay. And I'm like, that's that's the power of God because I know it can take people down. I'm like just the feelings of just like these dark these dark moments and these vulnerability and all that. It breaks you down. But for me, I felt like God had truly given me this peace, and He was showing me I'm I'm giving you this role for you know, this purpose to like give hope and also for you to like grow as a human, you know, and it was just a special, a special role. And, and I feel like for me, I will always treasure that. And I will always try to do my best to speak out and um, just be able to share about the movement of human trafficking. Absolutely. Well, I just want to honor you for taking on that role. I know it had to be a very difficult role. I know you had to put yourself into a position of great hurt. And I know, knowing you as well as I do, that you took on that hurt and that pain of others. I know you had others in your mind as you were as you were displaying that. And so just want to honor you and say thank you for, for saying yes to something that would have you could have very easily said, no, I don't want to do that. But you, you became what you're not to be able to minister to those who are. And, mm -hmm. and that's a big, uh, that's, that's ministry to me at its highest level. So thank you for doing that. And it is opening doors and it is making all of us aware. And it's also showing us hope. You know, it's showing us the hope of what can happen. Rescue can happen, right, Brooklyn? Hope can be on the way. Mm, yes, amen. And I, I love that about our movie. We show the after effects of just like coming out of human trafficking and the pain of that. Yes. But then we also show the hope. Like you said, we show that there is beauty in life and you don't have to live in that, in that hurt and that pain. You can actually move on and actually claim the love of Christ in your life too. And I think that's so special. Sure. Well, well, it is. It, it is. To me, that's the essence of life. And I, I talk about this all the time because it's such my heart. You know, my, my curriculum that I love to use that I wrote is Burdens of Blessings. And it's about allowing God to take those things that are, have hurt us and wounded us, take those hurts and begin this healing process so that we, in fact, take what once was just hurt and we use it as a voice of hope, his hope to the world. And I just feel each and every person listening now and each and every person Brooklyn will ever meet has a story of hope hiding within them. And so the story makes no difference how dark it may be. God's light is always greater, right? And that's what we saw in this. God's light was greater. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can see the transformation, especially yeah. like in this film. I loved seeing that transformation of joy come out of just receiving Christ in her life. Yeah. And it's just like it just there's just a change in her. And I'm like, that can happen for anyone. We all have pains. We all have hurts. We all have things that we deal with. But Christ gives us a new hope, a new life and joy that is just abundance of of just the, of all of that and he just wants to give us that freedom in life and so we and absolutely and when he died on the cross he said it is finished yes. all this he made himself greater in this world we will have trials and tribulations 
but be of good heart for I've overcome the world. He's overcome it all. And so we can choose each day to be the overcomers, to be, uh, to, to fill ourselves with that joy, to, to be able to take the darkness and let the light be greater than. And Brooklyn, that's just who you are. And so uh, in all the roles that you've played, I loved seeing you. This one, Don't Say My Name, is just, it's a worldwide global phenomenal. Uh, and to be able to, to know you is such a, an honor and to know that your heart in this is to really be the light of Christ in the darkness. And so I'm so proud to know you. I just love you and your heart. And speaking of your mom, I was able to meet her not long ago. And I can see where she would be such a prayer warrior and have everyone praying for you. So that's awesome. Yeah. Well, girl, let's transition now into your singing. I heard you on the radio. Let's talk about that. Um, I thought that the acting came first, but did the singing come first? Yeah, that's what's so funny. I actually, I sang like my whole life. I actually, my mom had told me I sang before I could talk. I guess I just had a little song in my heart <laughs> as a little girl. Okay. Um, but yeah, growing up, I would sing at my church and um, I sang in a couple bands over the years in my local community. And um, it was just always a, a place for me to honor Christ, but have just the best time with my friends and just like, share this music that like we loved and um yeah i always have loved music and then it was cool because like i said at 18 god had directed me into also the acting world and i was like oh like my in modeling and i was like okay this is so new um but it was the most exciting because i feel like he was like giving me these opportunities to see like i've got you like these cool spaces and i feel like sometimes for me like i'm a creative person and so i'm from a small town and I love my community and everything, but I just never really had a place to really like feel like I found my people. And I'm like, oh, like it makes sense now that I'm in the entertainment community because I'm like, these people are so creative and it's so like it feeds into what I love. And I never would imagine for myself that I would get to this place. Um, and so it's just neat how God just like directs and how he shows you these things. And you just have to walk faithfully and take it one step at a time. But yeah, it's been incredible. And the way he's enlarging your territory, one of the things that I tell people quite often is the hardest thing for God to do is to promote his people. And why? Because as he promotes us, we can get so prideful. We start to think that it's us. And so there you go, you know, and we see that with entertainers all, all way too often and not just entertainers, uh, people in ministry authors, all, all of us, we all have that tendency to become prideful. And so when God finds someone that he can promote that stays humble and, and still gives him glory, then he can extend their territory. And Brooklyn, that's what I think he sees in you because you just glorify God in every level. And so I think that you can expect for your territory to continue to be um, extended because of that, which leads me to my next question. How do you stay humble being an award-winning actress, uh, the songwriter, singer that you are? What do you think to yourself? Let's go behind the scenes again into your mind for those who are listening, who are starting to uh, be promoted and see themselves uh, being used in ways greater than they expected. What do you say to yourself? How do you handle that so that you stay the humble person that you are? Yeah. So for me, I honestly like just, I just am in prayer. I'm just like, Lord, as I step into each opportunity, like even today, I was like praying before this, like for myself, because I just want all of the glory to go to him. And I want me to just get out of the way. Because a lot of times when you find yourself wanting to step ahead, you get a little bit like it's just not as as you as genuine as you hope it to be. Or it's not as fantastic as you hope it to be because you don't get to your spiritual eyes are open. And so for me, I definitely pray and ask God, just show me what you want me to say. And I know you will because I trust you. I've trusted you in, in so many areas and he's shown up in my life. And so it's just be able to like give it over to him and allow him to move in you. And I also know, too, with as a as a person of character, you also want to have those characteristics of of, of kindness and, and have joy and also be like 
intentionally be a good listener to others because it's not all about, you know, your, your, your projects and all that stuff. You're also wanting to be able to give encouragement and give love to others that you are excited about. Like if I have a project that I seen through social media or whatever that I'm loving or in the movie theater or whatever, I, if I ever meet that person, I'm like, I am definitely going to tell them this is what I saw and I loved it, you know? And it, it connects with them because they're like, oh, you see my hard efforts and you notice. And even if they were maybe the top person of whatever, they still appreciate that. Because I know for me, when I was in Don't Say My Name or whatever, those words of encouragement, they mean so much. They're just like little nuggets of, of encouragement that just keeps you going. So I highly encourage people to do that for sure. If you see something you love and you see that person, tell them how much you love it and do it in the most genuine way. And um, it really means a lot to people. And I think that's how people will connect with you. And, and they want to keep up with you because they see that you're doing it in the most sincere way and you want to be here sincerely. Absolutely. I always say unspoken words have never encouraged anyone. So many times we think about how we admire someone or we, and so Brooklyn, that is such great advice is speak it say it. We never know how desperate or dry someone is just for a good word. Just because they're in leadership or because they're doing great things doesn't mean they're not also facing great battles. And that's the, that is the world that we as believers live in. It is a battlefield, but yet our hope is in Christ. We know he fights our battles, but we're still in the battle. So to encourage one another like that is is so huge and so important. Well, let's take a few minutes and talk about your songs. Um, tell me, how did you get, do you, tell me, did you write these songs? Tell me about those. Let's talk about it. Yeah. So, yes, I did write the music and the lyrics of the songs, Seasons Change and Rise. And they actually were journals of just my thoughts. And I had written them out. And like, I remember when seasons change, I wrote that one evening, it was like 10 o'clock in the evening. And I sat out in the living room and I was just writing in this, these words and, and I could almost hear the music already, just like had the flow of the song. And for me, I feel like it was God just giving me encouragement in, in the places where I needed it because it, in seasons change, it talks about, you know, some days of fear overwhelms me. I'm scared. I won't be able to face what's ahead, but you're the author of my story and you place me here to fulfill your plan. And so it just gives you that reassurance because God wants us to see that he's got us here for a reason. And yeah, we have all these feelings as humans, the fear and the doubt and the insecurity. But he's like, I have you here for a reason for such a time as this, Esther 414. And it's just like we truly must grab a hold of that because like we are here for a reason, for a purpose in this time in our life. And we can just like just live in that confidence, knowing that he's got us and that we can walk confidently in him. So that was definitely the inspiration for that. But with Rise, too, I, I felt like I was in a place with that song. Um, I was in a place of just like feeling like I was caught up in my own um, just places of like, oh, I'm, I'm like, let's say with, you know, social media back to that. It's a good thing, but sometimes it's not always great. You can get yourself caught up in it. And so like there was times when I'm like, man, I feel like I'm just like I just sometimes I get too much on that or just different things that happen in your life. You're like, God, help me like release that in places that I know it's not healthy, you know? And I feel like with Rise, it was like me crying out to God being like, you never fail to see anything I want to hide in my life, like any deepest parts of myself, but and you see it all. And you know, my rise and fall and I proclaim in your name, I will rise above it all. So like That's whatever's right. going in happening in my life, you see it and you know it. And you still love me and you want me to rise in your name and I will rise in your name yeah. and I will flourish, you know, because of who you are, not because of me, but because of him. Brooklyn, I will tell you what, they are both incredible. I wish we had set it up with your band and your music so you could sing to us. <laughs> Maybe one day that would be yeah, so cool. that would be amazing. Would it? Oh, yeah, it really would. <laughs> I would love it. I would yeah. love that. Um, don't, don't you find it? I think it is so true, though, that if we can be authentic and vulnerable in our own feelings, that we can turn that into a message. To me, that is our most powerful message. 
where we share God's hope in and through what we are going through. Uh, in Jeremiah 29, 11, when the Bible says, you know, he is, he, he birthed us with a, with the hope and a plan. I think that that greatest plan doesn't come from what we learn in books many times or what we, you know, read about. It's from inside us that if we allow God to work inside our own pain and then be able to uh, put that to music or put that to a book or put that to a curriculum or put that to an occupation. I believe that's where we just rise. That's where we rise too. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's a testimony. And like you said, like for me, if I honestly, when I had these songs, I really wasn't planning on releasing them. I, I technically was going to just have them for myself and I'd play them here at the house and my parents were like, you need to do something about it. You know, with your parents, you're like, Oh, that's sweet. You know, thanks. You know, and it means a lot, but you're like, I don't know, you know, just kind of self-conscious, but like when God calls you to it, like he called me to do this, like release this music last year. And I'm like, okay, so he's telling me to do it. And I must, you know, and I think like you said, like whatever he puts us to like to task, whatever he asks us to do, He's wanting us to do it for his glory. And so we can be that place of vulnerability because we are safe with him and he's showing us the path. We just have to be diligent and we have to also be like present in the moment and be like step by step, God, you take me to that place that you need me to go. Because I think sometimes we look too far ahead or too far behind and we can't live in our present and be like, this is where you have me, you know, even if I don't like where I'm at or even if I do, it's like, this is where you have me and I'm learning and I'm growing. And I want to love what you have right now, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that's just what I've really been noticing that God's been teaching me. Like, just love what you're, what you're doing right now, because like this present time is what is what's teaching you for the future. And, you know, and like, you know, it, it's just neat. It's just yeah. so cool. It's just like, but allow yourself to stay here in this moment so that mm -hmm. you can live it out. Brooklyn, I was getting ready to ask you, what is the final word that you would give to our audience? But boy, did you just give it. That was powerful. Be in the moment. Be here. Be now. Uh, be okay with what is going on right now. Let me ask you, uh, we have just a couple minutes left. Is there a Bible scripture that you would like to leave with those who are listening? You know, not everyone's going to be an award-winning actress. Not everyone's going to be a songwriter. Not everyone. God hasn't put that platform for, for all of us, but he has given all of us something to do. And it's all very important because it is our part in serving him. So for those who are struggling right now or those who are like, gosh, I never thought about it, about what Brooklyn said, be in the moment, don't run from it. What would be a final word or a final scripture that you would give to them, no matter where they are, for them to understand that where they are really matters and who they are really matters? Yeah. And I, I'm so glad you asked that because the verse that I've always held on to, especially with this career and, and it's special for anybody, but it's Romans eight twenty eight, and all things God works for the good of those who love him, who've been called according to his purpose. And that's for anybody you we've all been called. And, and I feel like when it says like for the good of those, so doesn't mean it's good or bad. It just means it's, this is like right happening right now, here and now. Um, he's showing us exactly what he wants us to do. And so we can always just trust him. And um, whatever you're going through in life, wherever you're following into, like whatever your, your life looks like right now, it might feel messy. It might feel like a lot, but just know that today is a new day. And today you can take a deep breath and be like, okay, I don't, and maybe you don't have faith and you're like, I don't know how to start and how to trust God. Just be like, God, I, I know I've heard of you and I want to trust you. So just show me those, those steps. So as I walk this moment, just lead the, lead the way. And just the simple faith and simple prayer, it will, it will be a, a catapult into something beautiful. And, mm -hmm. um, and even as a believer, just, Again, that simple prayer even is still is still touching. It's like, God, I trust you in this moment. Just show me the path this moment. Just take me that step, that next step, you know, and just don't. Yeah. 
I, I, lo- I love that verse. And I always, uh, Brooklyn, I always say, if it's, if it's not good, God's not finished because he's promised to make all things good. So if it's not good, he's not finished. We keep going. Friend, we're out of time. Thank you so much for joining me. Next time, I'm going to bring you in right beside me. <laughs> Because this is good, but it can be better. (laughs) I love you so much. And thank you again so much for joining me. It truly couldn't have gotten any better than today. The Holy Spirit brings us together as one, no matter what. So thank you so much for joining us, Brooklyn Whitmer. And for our audience, oh my gosh, I told you, isn't she fantastic and wonderful? And the thing of it is, is that is the real girl. You see her on the screen. You see her here on the radio. But Her love for the Lord leads all of us to that deeper relationship. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed today as much as I enjoy bringing it to you. And I look forward to seeing you next time, friends, right here on Coffee. Bye, everybody.